In this video, I'm going to give some extra information about Rahu that I haven't had in any of my Rahu courses thus far. And this is where I think you can get some clarity on Rahu and approach the Rahu areas of your life more successfully and more importantly, hopefully without, with a lot less stress and strain. So, when we're born on this earth, the minute we're born, we start getting programmed. We start seeing things, noticing things, and we start formulating these ideas about how to behave, what to do, what to do in this situation, what not to do, and how to be. Okay? And that happens the moment we're born. In fact, we can say it happens the moment we're even conceived. Now, in addition to that, things are going to happen that hurt. So, events will happen, um, you get hurt, it's a trauma, and out of that trauma you create a wound, which means a sore spot inside yourself. And just like if I break my arm, I'm going to do everything I can to protect my arm until it heals, we do the same thing with our inner wounds or our psychological wounds. We find a mechanism to protect ourselves from having that pain repeated. Okay? So if a parent becomes an alcohol and leaves you home alone and disappears when you're one years old, you're going to have severe abandonment issues. This wound of people are going to leave me and it hurts and it threatens me. And so you're going to adopt ways in relationships to try to ensure that that never happens again. And in so doing, mess up your relationships, most likely, okay? So, just like with any, anything else, if we have a broken arm, we have to learn how to use it normally eventually, right? It's the same with our wounds. We have to learn how to operate normally eventually, after it's healed, just as we do that after the arm heals. So, these two things, all the programming we take on from the moment we were conceived, all the traumas that cause wounds that we try to protect ourselves from having repeated pains come into our life, those things dictate so much of how we behave and so much of what we think we're supposed to do. Okay? Now, before all that started, we had a natural way of being. Okay? We were just were a certain way. Okay? Everyone here is designed to operate in a certain way. It's kind of like wolves. Wolves act the same. They're predictable. Black bears, they act the same, they're predictable. Squirrels, they act the same, they're all predictable. In the animal kingdom, all animals have a way that they act as a species, okay? Now, humans have a, a natural way of being too, okay? Now, Vashishta said, Sage Vashishta said, the natural way of humans is to be unnatural. <laughs> so that's our natural way, which means there's not a way for everyone to be. Okay? Everyone has its own way. When we look at the animal kingdom, we say there's wolves, there's this, there's that, there's that. When it comes to the human kingdom, everybody is their own species. Every single person is their own species. Okay? So, you have a way of being. And then you're born on this earth and you start getting all this programming so hopefully not too much trauma, but most certainly some, it's unavoidable. And now, you have all this stuff modifying, dictating, deciding your behavior, your responses, what you think you should do in life, how you think you should do it, what you think you have to stay away from or else, and so on and so on and so on. Now, some of those responses to the, to the programming, some of those um, responses to the wounds and the trauma, will actually be in line with our natural way of being, with the species of human being that you are as an individual. Okay? Those are the areas of life that just work for you. You know? Your training, aka your programming, and your traumas, aligned in a way to cause you to feel okay about behaving in a way that's actually just what works for you, that actually is truly you. Okay? We don't have to talk about those parts because those parts work. But I'm going to talk about them real briefly. The unique thing about those parts are, those are usually the parts growing up in life. You don't think, one day I'm going to have this or do this or be this. You don't spend time thinking about it. But when you get older, you look back and you said, huh, this worked and this worked and I never even thought about it. It just kind of worked. Those things are very natural to your way of being. Okay. 
Then there's the things we're constantly dreaming about, thinking about, oh, I need this, I want this, I gotta have this. Those are things that we simply don't know how to operate in in the context of our natural way of being. And a lot of those things, if not the majority of them, are going to revolve around the Rahu's house and the Rahu's sign. Okay, both of those are really important. So, what Rahu is basically, what Rahu basically is, is the place in your life, the thing in your life, the way of being in your life, the natural way for you to be, that the programming and the wound responses and the training of your life's experiences do not support that natural way of being. And that's why the Rahu house is so hard. Because in every house you have a natural way of being, okay? Now, that natural way of being can get distorted based on the avastas of the planets in the house, the avastas of the house lord, and so on. So there could be some distortion of that due to, you know, your programming and traumas, okay? But the Rahu house, where that Rahu is, guaranteed, and that Rahu sign guaranteed, the way that's natural for you to be does not align with your programming, with your responses to the wounds. Okay? It just doesn't. But you're still going to act in the ways that you've been trained. You know, through the wound responses and the, um, the programming, what you've been taught, what you've been told, and what you believe, and so on and so on. Okay? But in the Rahu house, none of those things are going to be what is being for you. So the minute we go into any house, we go there with all of our training. All the way we, so we think this has to be done, how I need to respond and do. What I can allow and not allow. And a lot of houses we go to, things just work out because it is aligned with our natural way of being. The minute you go into that Rahu house, the majority of it, of how you think it's supposed to work, has nothing to do with your natural way of being. And so you crash and burn, and you try again, and you crash and burn, and you crash and burn, and you keep crashing and burning. Because we're here to be ourselves, to live as ourselves. Which means, if we try to do anything in a way that's not ourselves, it's going to crash and burn. It's like Krishna said in the Gita, he said, a person has to follow their swa dharma. Swa dharma means own nature. You have to follow your own way of being. And then he goes on to say, those who practice the dharma of another person, even if they do it perfectly, will never reach me. Okay? So where we're following the dharma of another person, of the programming and the wound responses and the stuff that we've been made to think is what we have to be, is the Rahu house. So we're going to go into the house with all these ideas about how to do it, that has nothing to do with our swa dharma, our natural way of being in that house. And so the only result is we fail. So in the Rahu house is the house where most significantly we have to learn to be ourselves. We have to find what being ourselves in that house is, even is. We don't know. We'll have all these ideas about that house floating through our heads since childhood. We'll be thinking this and this and this and this and this about the house. This is going to be about my second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, twelfth, first house, whatever house your Rahu's in. <clears throat> and you'll think that's really you. The problem with us humans, we think our thoughts are us. They're not. Our thoughts are just shit that landed in our heads from some place, okay? The thing that's us is much deeper than our thoughts. And it knows how you need to be, and it, it knows what you are, because it is what you are. It's the same thing. But all those thoughts are crowding in, all those wound responses are smothering that part, the heaviest and the hardest in the Rahu house. So when we go there, being ourselves, we don't even know what it is. In another house, we know what being ourselves is, but we have a struggle maybe. Some houses, we just are ourselves, it works like magic. And when I say houses, I mean signs as well, because they're equally important for this. But wow, starting out in life, we don't even have a clue about what's right for us for the Rahu house. In fact, lots of times, the way we think we need to live our Rahu house is 180 degrees different than what's really right for us. 
I've seen this. I've seen people say, you know, because I've been doing readings now. I have clients from way back, you know, from almost 30 years now. And so you watch people over this time span. And I've had people say, oh, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to be the kind of person that is like this, this, and this. And they're talking about their Rahu house. 25 years later, fast forward for us, slow motion for them because it's so painful. And they realize after their Rahu and K2 maturations, which is 42 and 48, that, wow, that would have been better for me. I would have been happier. My life would have been better if I had gone that way that I said, oh, I'm never going to be that kind of person. That's how confused we can be about how the natural way of being for us is in the Rahu house. And until we find that natural way of being, we're going to stumble around in that Rahu house and we're going to stumble around with that Rahu sign, fall down in the house and get crushed by the Rahu sign. So, it's something to keep in mind. If you're under 42, you haven't had your Rahu maturation. Which means, most likely, you have not had a true experience of what it is to be you in that house. There's a very good chance you haven't had a true experience of what it's like to be you. And that up until 42, that Rahu maturation, all the things that you're thinking is you in this house, realize most of them are probably not true. Wow. And I'm saying this not to scare you. I'm saying this to make your minds open so that being in you that has a natural way of being in that Rahu house is free to come out. See, the reason it's not coming out because all the program, all the wound responses are saying the way to be in this house is different than you really are more than it's saying that to any other part of your lives. And it says it so loud that we end up becoming closed off to being the thing we really are in that house. And like I said, 25 years, the client says, the thing I said I, should have nev I would never do, that's how I should have lived my life. And it's like, whoa. I'm saying this so you can just let go as much as your ideas about that house a much, let go as much about the ways you think you need to live that house. Let go everything about what you think is the right way and the wrong way to live the house. Just let those ideas go. Let those thoughts go. So that the beingness of that house can come out. Okay? And then you can be yourself in that house. And then it's going to work. Is it going to work the way you thought it was going to work at 5, 10, 15, 20, 29, 39? No. Is it going to work the way you thought it would at 42? Somewhat. But once you really get that being out in that house and you're being yourself in that house, no, it's going to be even different than you thought at 42. And in fact, you'll spend more time exploring the way for you to be in that house than anything else after your Rahu maturation. After Rahu maturation, it's a constant exploration of what is it for me to be me in this house? And it's a really wonderful time of really exploring yourself and, and, and realizing surprises. And a lot of those surprises are going to go against your programming or against your ideas of how you think things are supposed to be. And a lot of those things are going to challenge your wound responses, which means it's going to force you to heal your inner wounds. Because if you have a way of being, and you have an inner wound that's making you go, oh no, I don't want that, that'll hurt me then how are you going to be that, right? So a big part of this process is to heal those wounds, which I've talked about in other Lajitati Vashta classes and stuff. And, um, but the other thing is letting go of those programs. When people used to come into my office before I was 42, before my Rahu maturation, and get a reading and say, you talk about the Rahu house, I'd say, okay, that sounds good. You know, now when they do that, I try not to laugh. I mean, I try to hold myself back because I'm just saying, you know, if you want to make the astrologer laugh, tell them what you're going to do in the future with your Rahu house, right? And I learned that by seeing it, but more significantly by <laughs> doing it, you know, and just shaking my head across the things I thought about that Rahu house and cracking my ass off over myself. 
And I I try to tell the person, I know you think that, but let it all go. You have, trust me, you have no idea what's truly right for you. You're just testing the waters. You're figuring it out. And this is part of figuring it out. And one day you'll figure it out. And maybe some of what you did was what you really needed to be. Well, most of it won't be. It'll, it'll, it'll be different. And see, that's the beauty of the Rahu house. It's the house we have to define based on the way we are, based on the being we are, based on our swa dharma in the house. And it's a true quest to find ourselves. See, in other houses that are working, the programming, the wound responses kind of support our natural way of being. You know? You know, the things our parents said do? Yeah, that's actually the way I am in that house. That's a lot of stuff in life. But the Rahu house, the things you're told, the things you see, the things the preacher says, the thing your girlfriend wants from you, all these things have nothing to do with the natural way of being for you to be in that Rahu house. And so you have to find it. And you're not going to get it programmed into you conveniently. When something's, when you, the things that are programmed into us, that are actually into our minds, that correlate to our true way of being are so easy. Those parts of our life, it's just, we just touch it and it's gold, you know? It just works, whatever that is. And our job is to make the Rahu house work that well. And as soon as we awaken our being to that house, instead of trying to live it according to the programming and the wound responses, boom, we're being natural in that house and we're getting what we actually need, okay? Now, as you explore this idea of trying to be in the Rahu house, what you're going to feel is a peaceful joy with respect to that house. When you're doing that house, you're in a state of peace and joy. Okay? Time passes, which means, oh my gosh, you know, time just flew. Okay? Now, when you're, on the other hand, when you're trying to do that house and you know, you're trying to run these programs that aren't aligned with your true way of being, you're not in sync with your spirit. As a result, you're getting stress and anxiety and time, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time, I'm still not even done, and you're anxious and stressed. Okay, completely different experience. So time passes and no anxiety is the sign. You just get in the flow. Now you might do it, you might do something that's natural to your way of being, and as soon as you stop, you'll have your you know, your, some insecurities come in because of your traumas in life and stuff. And you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. I hope that's okay. And you might fret it with it for a few days. But then you realize the feedback and the repercussions are really positive. But in that moment of doing it, you forget all that stuff. That's one of the signs of doing something from a place of being. All the stresses, all the worries, all the anxieties, all the fears disappear. And it can be like stage fright. You can be going, say you're an actor and your way of being is to act. And you're like, before you're like, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do this. Oh my gosh, you're biting your nails. But the minute you get on stage and you get that first word out of your mouth, it's a different you. And then you perform like, wow. And the minute you get off the stage, you might go, oh my gosh, I hope everyone likes it. Oh my gosh. And you're nervous until somebody gives you feedback. Okay? Lots of people. But in that moment of being that actor, or being this or that or that, it's peaceful, it's joy, it's smooth, it's harmonious, there's no stress, there's no anxiety, there's no, there's no concentration, oh my God, how much more time do I have, what time is you lose track of time, okay? It's natural. You feel good, and you feel good about yourself while you're doing it. Like again, before and after, you might doubt yourself a million times, but while you're doing it, you know? Boom. And the things, see, we have this natural way of being, and we have our self-doubts, we have our insecurities, we have our vulnerabilities. But when we step into being that thing, all those things will fade away during the time. So as an example, my confession is, sometimes I'll get ready to make a video about something, like I'm making a video today, and I'm thinking, gosh, I hope this is going to be a good video. I hope this is a good video. And I'm going, I hope I have enough time to do this video. Someone wants to call, I'm supposed to call someone in 20 minutes, and I hope, I, so I better get it right the first time, you know. Ugh, all my human frailties show up, right? But the minute I get that first sentence out, everything shifts. 
I forget that there's someone waiting for me to call them. I lost track of time. Any aches and pains I had in my body disappear as long as I'm in front of this camera, you know, or talking to someone about astrology. I don't doubt myself. I feel every word I say is true. Okay? I do it, I get done, and I stop, and I go, gosh, I don't know if I should have said that. I don't know if I should have said that. And then all the human frailties come back, you know? So the point I'm making is when you're in that state of being, you know it's your right state of being because of when you do it, not the before and after. Okay, now, a saintly person has that state of being always, but in our, for us, the rest of us, we're stepping into different states of being all the time, into a healthy place of being where we flow to a point to, or to a place where we have our, our doubts and insecurities can arise, whatever it is. I was a very shy kid. I didn't talk to anyone until I was six years old, and then only if I really, really had to. I was scared to talk to people. But when I started teaching, all that disappeared. When I'm talking about what I am, which is astrology, my being. But if I have to talk about people and I'm not in my way of being an astrologer, oh yeah, those human frailties, I'm, I struggle with them. So like I said, there's places it's so easy for our being to flow. And there's places where we get, you know, our frailties and our problems come in. But I'm trying to illustrate what it feels like to be in that state, okay? And in the Rahu house, of course, uh-uh. Finding that state, wow, is so hard. And you may never find that state until Rahu maturation at 42. You know, it might take that long to truly have an experience of that state, okay? And for some people, the benefit of that experience of the Rahu manifestation may take, I mean, it not even happen until 44 at the latest. It can happen as early as 41, Latest at 44, okay? All right, this is what being is. You want to look, am I feeling like this? Okay, this is, I need to feel this way in my Rahu house too. The more I feel this way, the more it's going to align to who I am and it's going to work, okay? <clears throat> so, we need to not do our Rahu house. We need to be our Rahu house. It's a state of being. It's, a state of being is light, it's easy, it's harmonious. But when there's programs and when there's, um, when there's programming and there's wound responses that are contrary to our natural way of being, it's unbearable to be in that state of being. Because those programs will rip us apart if we try to go there. The minute we try to go there, our programs say, that you're being bad, you shouldn't do that, that's not the right way. Or, that's dangerous, you're going to get hurt, you're going to get hurt. All those wound responses and all the programming that's against your way of being starts stepping in. And so it's really hard to step into that place of being. So all you can do is let it go, let all the thoughts go, and focus on healing your psyche, healing your wounds, and make that a big part of your life. Because until that's done, it truly is unbearable to be yourself in that Rahu house. And it's unbearable to live out that Rahu sign because you're just going to have all this nonsense, wound responses and concepts and ways of doing that aren't you, that keep you from being. See, everyone can tell you what to do. How do I do math? It's two plus two. But nobody can tell you to be a mathematician, right? So everyone goes to school and learns two plus two learns their times tables, maybe learns calculus. They, everyone can learn to do anything. But nobody can teach us to be something. Now, where people have taught us to do something that coincides with their being, easy. So somebody teaches us to do math and it coincides with us being a mathematician and wow, boom, we're on top of it. We found our career, our purpose in life. Now, where the Rahu house is, is where we're told to do something has nothing to do with our being, yet we think we have to do that. So we go to the Rahu house to do it this way, and it's never going to work by doing it that way. It's only going to work by finding your way of being in that house. And out of being what's naturally you in that house, you'll do what's right for you. And you'll bring in the right people for you, and you'll have the right situations in your life, whatever it is 
whatever house and sign your Rahu is in. Okay? That's a very important point that I didn't cover in my courses. Um, in my Master in Rahu K2 course, I, ta- I give interpretations for all the Rahu and K2 positions. You want to kind of think through it this way. Okay, it's about being this, about finding your place of being always in the Rahu house. It's not working, you can't find what works for you because you're not able to live as yourself in that house. Because the programming and the wound responses are saying, do it another way. Do it the most opposite way. Okay? And it takes some courage to drop all those, um, all that programming, all the way you're supposed to do something, you know? Because that's what gives us security. I was told this is the way it works. Doing this is what's going to make my mom proud of me, my dad proud of me, my religion proud of me, is the white right way to do it, the dharmic way, the spiritual way, whatever. Okay? And that makes us feel courage enough to go out and do it. But with the Rahu house, none of that stuff is valid. None of that is true for you. Whatever you heard about your Rahu house isn't true for you. So you have to go in there naked with no armor, with no protection, with no support, with no validation, and just be. It's the scariest experience of our lives. Okay? But it's the experience we have to, um, we have to go through to have any happiness and joy and peace in our Rahu house. If not, it's going to be very, very, very difficult. It'll be impossible. Now, everyone's Rahu is not created equally, which means some people's Rahus, the, the programming and the concepts and the wound responses are like so messed up, so messy, that sorting through that and finding the true way of being, it can take forever, you know, it feels like forever. Another person, their Rahu might be in good shape, you know, and if that's the case, Finding their way of being in the wrong house can be so much easier. Okay? How do you tell? You look at the Lajitati Avashtas of the planets in the house with Rahu. You look at the Lajitati Avashta of Rahu's Lord. And then look at plants that are aspecting strongly Rahu and Ketu. Or sorry, Rahu. And if it's a strong aspect, look at its Lajitati Vashta and realize that Lajitati Vashta is sort of getting passed on to Rahu. But the most important is the Lajitati Vashta of the planet with Rahu and the Lord of Rahu. Those are both equally important. And that's why in my courses on Rahu and K2, I always stress that you examine the conditions of Rahu and K2. Because that has a lot to do with how much of these difficulties you have to work through in order to find your way of being in the Rahu house. Okay? All right, enough said. Thank you. Bye-bye.